You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio. The following lecture is entitled, Meet the God Who Never Gives Up. Enjoy and have a glorious day. Today we're going to look at a story that you're probably very familiar with, the story of the Old Testament prophet Jonah. We find that Jonah didn't share God's compassion for the wicked people of Nineveh. In fact, as soon as God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah laced up his track shoes and took off in the other direction. But this is not just a children's Sunday school story. This is a story, a true story by the way, that very clearly reveals God's love for a very wicked world, as well as his persistence in the lives of his children. God never gives up on us. So grab your Bible and turn with me to the book of Jonah, and we'll start in chapter 1. Let's learn together about the God who never gives up. Take your Bibles and look with me in the book of Jonah. And and I just want to ask you, because most of you, in fact, probably just about everybody here is, is somewhat familiar with the story of Jonah. You may have learned this story when you were a child and you went to Sunday school. And you, do you remember when you, we used to go to church and they let you color in church? You could go to church and they gave you a box of crayons and they gave you paper and they let you color a picture of what you were learning. So I just want you to use your imagination and just imagine that I gave you a box of 64 Crayola crayons. I mean, every color you can imagine. And I gave you a big piece of paper and I said to you today, I want you to draw a picture of what comes to your mind when you think of the story of Jonah. So what would you draw? What would be the first thing you draw if you're going to draw a a picture about the story of Jonah? What's the first thing? Oh, some of you said whale, some of you said fish. The Bible really doesn't say whale, but class, that's okay. You would draw that big fish. If you want to call it a whale, you can call it a whale. But you would draw that big fish. Now, the the fish, the great fish in Jonah, is a really important part of the story. We're going to look at the big fish today as we go along the way. But you know that the fish is only mentioned four times in the book of Jonah. So one thing you draw, you draw a picture of that big fish. What else might you draw a picture of if you're drawing a picture of the story of Jonah? What else might you draw? Some people said the ship. You, you draw the ship because we know that, that uh, Jonah was, was on the ship. And somebody said you draw water, so you might draw the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and, and where uh, Jonah was on that ship. What else might you draw if you're going to draw a picture of the story of Jonah? What else? Or who else? Jonah, right? You would draw a picture of Jonah. I was talking to my wife, Michelle, about this this week. I said, what would you draw? She said, I'd draw a picture of that big fish and the big fish spitting Jonah out of its mouth. And so maybe that's what some of you would do. You draw a picture of the big fish. You draw a picture of the ship. You draw a picture of the water. You draw a picture of Jonah. Jonah is very important in this book. But you know something? His name is mentioned only 18 times in this book that bears his name. There's another name. There's another person in this story whose picture you cannot draw. You couldn't draw his picture, but he's the most important element of the entire story of Jonah. You can't draw his picture, but he really forms the frame around the picture because everything that happens in the story depends on him. I'm talking about God. And you know something that God is mentioned 38 times in this little four-chapter book of Jonah. Over and over again, this book reminds us that God is at work. And here's what we see in this book of Jonah. Jonah ran from God, but God wouldn't give up on Jonah. And I'll promise you this about your life, whatever the picture of your life may be today, God sees you in that picture and he will not give up on you. The Bible says this in Jonah chapter 1 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. 
So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship, and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish." And they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation and where do you come from? What is your country and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea, Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. This is the word of the Lord. Will you join with me as we pray? Father, I pray that you would move me out of the way and speak to your people today. God, remind us that you never give up on us. And may we turn to you today in a new way, in a fresh way, because of your great grace for us. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Well, I want us to look at this chapter, and even as I was reading it and thinking about all of the things I've studied this week, I'm just sort of touching the surface of all of the things we could say about this beautiful chapter from God's Word. But I want to talk to you today about three kinds of people that God never gives up on. Three kinds of people that this passage of Scripture shows us God never gives up on. First of all, the Word of God shows us God never gives up on people far from Him. When we're far from God, when we feel like we're far from God, when it looks like we're far from God, God never gives up on us. He never gives up on people who are far from Him. Look in verses 1 and 2 of our text. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. We'll stop right there. Over 100 times in the Old Testament, that phrase, the word of the Lord came. That phrase appears over 100 times in the Old Testament. Every time it appears, it's God speaking to one of his prophets. Most of the time, it's God giving a message for his prophets to deliver to his people. But sometimes, as in this case, it is God coming with a command for one of his prophets. Jonah was the son of Amittai. He prophesied in the land of Israel about 700 or more years before the time of Jesus Christ. And he was probably a very popular preacher during his day. Because Jonah, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Kings, had made a prophecy that Israel's borders would be extended and that its land would increase. He made that prophecy, and then the prophecy, the prediction, came true. And so as a result, the people of Israel really thought a lot of Jonah. He had brought them good news, and the good news had come true. God came to Jonah and said to Jonah, Arise, 
Go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. God said, Jonah, arise, get up, and go to Nineveh. Now that word, arise, there is a word of urgency. You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio. Now let's get back to today's message. Meet the God who never gives up. God was telling Jonah right now, don't wait. Don't even worry about packing your bags. Get up right now and go 500 miles east of Israel to the city of Nineveh in the land of Assyria. And I want you to go there, Jonah, and I want you to come and bring a message to those people. I want you to call out against that that city and, and tell them that their evil, the evil they have done, has come before the presence of of the Lord. Here's what God was doing. He was warning the people of Nineveh to turn from their sin and to come to him before he came down to them and judged them. Jonah heard that message and he realized that God was sending him to people who were far, far from God. God never gives up on people who are far from him. You see, the people of Assyria weren't just misguided souls who had lost their way. They were terrorists. They were some of the worst people you could have imagined. You know, anything that a society puts in stone is something that that society wants people to remember about them for all of history. When we write something in stone, when we cast something in stone, it says we want people to know this about us. Well, what did the Assyrians, the people from cities like Nineveh, what did they want all of history to know about them? If you were to travel to the British Museum, you would find there a display of stonework from ancient Assyria. You would find there some stone carvings from inside the palace of one of the kings of Assyria. And there you would see a portrayal of Assyrian soldiers who had come into a city and conquered that city and severed the heads of of the people of that city taking those severed heads and playing a game of catch with those severed heads, throwing them back and forth. These were ruthless people who were proud of their cruelty. They would come into a city, and and the first thing they would do when they conquered a city was to take the mayor and the officials of the city and to put them on stakes, to just pierce them through on stakes while they were still alive and just leave them in the hot sun dying so that everyone would know what they had done. And again, I say, these were not just misguided people. These were not just confused people. These were not just people who needed to be nudged back in the right direction. The people of Nineveh were terribly wicked people, far, far from God. But can I promise you this? Before I was saved, God looked at me, and I was a wicked person far from God. Had I done any of those terrible things like I've described the Assyrians did? No. But I had sinned against God. And any time, any time God comes to someone to save them, He is coming to someone far, far from him and drawing that person to himself by his grace because God never gives up even on people far from him. Maybe you're here today and you feel like you're far from God. People around you know that you're you're just far from God. Your lifestyle and your heart and everything about you seems to be so far from God. I'll promise you this. God has not given up on you. He loves you, he cares about you, and he wants to bring you to himself. And I would remind believers here today, don't give up on that person in your family, that person in your workplace, that person in your community, that person who seems to be so opposed to everything about God. You don't know whether that person is just one word away from coming to Jesus. You see, God looked at the city of Nineveh and realized that Nineveh was just one Jonah away from a revival. And somebody in your life may just be one word from you 
away from coming to know Jesus. Somebody I meet might be one Stephen away from hearing the good news of Jesus and being saved. God never gives up on people far from him. Secondly, God never gives up on people who fight him. God never gives up on people who fight him. Well, we move into the story a little bit more deeply in verse 3. And notice what the word of God says. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, that was a, a port city there in Israel, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. God had sent Jonah to Nineveh. 500 miles to the east. Instead, he decided to go as far from God as he could in the other direction. Tarshish was a city on the coast of what is now Spain. It was about 2,500 miles away from Israel. In Jonah's day, the people of Israel thought Tarshish was the farthest you could go away from where they were. And so he went down to Joppa. He found a ship that was going where he wanted to go. He paid the fare to get on board. He went down deep into that ship. He turned in his resignation as a prophet of God and said, God, I'm going away from your presence. And here's why. Jonah didn't want the people of Nineveh to turn back to God. He doesn't tell us that here, but look over in chapter 4, verse 2, and notice what Jonah said to the Lord later on in the story. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, Jonah prays this way. He says, oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. God's own man, God's own prophet was given a message of grace from God. He said, God, I don't want to give that people your message because I don't want them to be saved. I want them to be judged. Have you ever made that decision about somebody? Have you ever made that decision that you determined in your own heart somebody was so far from God that you didn't want them to be saved? You didn't want things to be made right with them in God. You wanted them to be punished. You wanted nothing else for them other than for God to just zap that person. Jonah lived in a city that was near the border. He was in a place where they would have seen what the Assyrians did when they came in and invaded and hurt people. Maybe that was why he was so hard-hearted. I don't know what his heart reason was. But he did not want those people to turn to God. So he turned in his resignation as a prophet. He went down into that ship. He got ready to get as far away from God as he could. But here's what he didn't know. He could not get away from God because God is everywhere. Psalm 139 verse 7 says this, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol in the grave, you are there. And somewhere in his mind, Jonah would have known that he couldn't get away from God, but he had determined that he was going to fight against God. Now, here's something you don't want to do. You don't want to pick a fight with God. Because when you pick a fight with God, God will fight with you, and he doesn't, he fights fair. <laughs> But there are no holds barred when you're fighting with God. You are listening to Second Chance Ministry Radio.